This is the Brocade Campus Feature Explainer Series. I'm Terry Henry. Today we're going to have a quick look at how to set up stacking, in particular on the 7250 series ICX platform. Uh, so the first thing is the base model um, may not come with a 10 gig license. So depending on how you purchase that from the factory, it may have uh, no 10 gig license on it. Uh, and just have uh, eight one gig SFP ports. It could have the two port 10 gig license or it could have eight all eight ports enabled for 10 gig. But in order to enable stacking, that has to be on 10 gig ports. So you have to enable a 10 gig license if you don't have one already. Um, and you should be able to see that through the show license command. So in my case, I actually have a trial license on here, but I have a two port 10 gig license uh, on this device. And so if you, get that out of the factory, then then the default ports, ports 121 and 123 will already be enabled for 10 gig and you'll be ready to go. But if you add that license in the field after the device is already booted, you may have to go into those ports and configure them for 10 gig because they'll be uh, configured for gig by default. If we do a show run here, we'll see that uh, 121 and 123 do not show up, only uh, 122, 124, 5, 6, 7, and 8 as 1,000 and full. So those are set for 10 gig, and we know they are because they're they're not showing up as, a, as an alternate from the default. Uh, so those are ready to go, and that's where I have my stack cables, uh, well, not stack cables, but twin axe cables connected between the two devices. Um, so the next thing I need to do on one and only one device, I need to go into config T and enable it for stacking. So we'll do a config T. Um, we are going to do a stack enable here. And it says stacking is enabled. These units actively participating in stacking uh, and optical monitoring is not available for 121 and 123. That is an effective stacking. Optical monitoring does not work on those stack ports. So the next thing we need to do um, we can exit out of here. Uh, we can do a right mem. You don't have to. Uh, so, so the next thing you do is you do a um, stack secure setup command. And the uh, the uh, stack secure setup is just going to go out and um, it's going to discover the stack for you. So it's going to see all the devices it can see. Um, so it came back with a, it says that there's a ring topology. So it knows that there's a ring. Um, one hop away, there's a 7250 uh, going upstream. And one hop away, there's a 7250 going downstream. Those are the same MAC address because of the same switch. But if you had you know, two, three, four, 12 switches in the stack, it would have discovered all of them. It would have uh, showed you all of those devices and their MAC addresses and said, do you want to do this? So in this case, I'm going to say, yes, I do want to do this. I accept that topology. Um, and so then it's asking me if I accept the unit ID. So I can go in and I can I can change unit IDs. So for example, before I, I stack enabled, I could, um, I could force them to be particular unit IDs. For the most part, I don't need to do that. It's just going to put them in, in order that it discovers them. So one, two, three, four, five, et cetera. Uh, so I'm going to accept that default. Um, and so it now forces an election um, and it's going to reboot unit two. So it's going to basically um, uh, add that into the stack by by uh, by blowing the config away and rebooting it. And then I will see those interfaces as the unit number slash um, module number slash port number. So unit one will be you know one slash one slash one. Unit two will be two slash one slash one, etc. Um, so the other thing I can do is set a priority. So uh, if I go back into show run here, I'm now going to see, um, I see the, the stack enable. I see my stack ports here, which I can change if I need to. I see a stack Mac. Uh, and I also see hitless failover enable. So, th so that command and the stack Mac, um, those are automatically put in as of 8.0.20. Prior to that, you had to go in and set those up if you wanted the stack to the master to faillessly hit, uh, 
to hitlessly fail over in the event that the master failed. Um, so once those are in, then the the stack Mac is not going to change when the master changes. So devices don't have to re-ARP and it's not going to cause any network disruption when that happens. Um, the other thing we can do is go in and change, make a priority. So um, there's a priority of 128 on this device. I can go in and change its priority. By default, the priority is zero on a device. So the highest priority wins the election to be the master. So because I ran the secure setup from this device, it makes me the pri the high priority. But if I wanted someone else to be the priority or I wanted you know someone else to be the, the next best priority, I could go in and change those priority commands. So the uh, second unit has finished rebooting at this point and uh, is now a member of the stack. So if we do a show stack, we will now see that new member has joined. So we see two units in the stack now. Um, and uh, so this is the active, this is the unit I'm on. Um, here's his MAC address. He has the high priority, as I mentioned before, and he's local, which means that I'm directly connected. And then I have unit two, uh, which is a member, um, although he is about to be converted to standby, he has a priority of zero. Uh, and he's remote, which means I'm not directly connected. And here's the active topology. So um, I see that, that my port 1 slash 2 slash 3 is connected to 2 slash 2 slash 3. And then my 1 slash 2 slash 1 is connected to 2 slash 2 slash 1 on the other side. Um, there is no standby at the point I ran that command, but then uh, since I ran that command, it elected a standby. So it waits um, for for about a minute after it uh, it adds a device into the stack before it elects a, a standby unit. Um, so here we see that that we now have an active and a standby as opposed to prior we had an active and a member. Um, so uh, and then it will learn other protocols and it'll be ready in in 21 seconds. So it should be ready by now. Uh, and now if we look at the running config, now we see Sorry. Now we see both units, stack unit one with here's our priority 128. So this is the unit we're on. And here's our stack unit two with no priority. So he's using the default priority of zero. Um, so I now have all of the ports uh, at my at my uh, disposal. So I can now not only go into unit one's ports and configure them, but I can also configure unit two's ports. So for example, I can go interface E one slash one slash one, which is a, a port on unit one, of course. So it's unit module, um, yeah, unit module port. And then I could also, if I wanted to, go in and configure two slash one slash one, which would be a port on unit two module one port one. Anyway, so that's it, um, and uh, good luck.